let's specifically talk about some common glassware you're going to come across in the lab. I think the big three of the glassware you're going to see in the lab would be the beaker, the flask, and the graduated cylinder. The beaker and the flask, in my mind, kind of have similar roles. They just kind of hold stuff. Notice that the flask, this is specifically called an Erlenmeyer flask, but probably the only one you're going to see. You might see some other ones. Uh, has a wide bottom and a, a skinny top and is used, uh, like I said, to hold uh, liquids or solids. And what's nice about this is because it has a skinny top, you're less likely to have things drop into it. You can also put a stopper in the top and make it a little bit more secure. And it's also, um, uh, but it doesn't have a, a beveled edge, which we'll talk about here in a second. This is the beaker. Like, I feel like this is like the most basic type, like a cup of uh, glassware you'll find in a lab. It has a nice little pour spout on it that allows liquids to flow out of it, though not use, sometimes not very well. And one real quick side note I want to show you is that sometimes you can take, this is called a stir rod. If you take a stir rod and you place it over the beaker, it'll actually nestle down into that little uh, hit the, uh, little um, divot there, and this is called uh, uh, decanting. You can actually have a liquid. It's really cool. You should try it sometime in the lab. You can make the liquid just travel down the end of the glass rod and into the, um, into the uh, whatever you're trying to pour it into. So, yeah, so this is, like I said, this is a beaker. We got various sizes. Here's a one liter. Here's a 100 mil. And you've got these little teeny tiny guys. Look at this. Look at this, Sarah. Look how cute these are. This is a 10 mil beaker. I don't even know why they make them so small, All right? Um, different types of flask, uh, by the way, different types of flasks we can see. Uh, this is probably the second most common one you're going to see. This is called the volumetric flask, a volumetric flask. And it's weird in that you can notice that it has a much taller, skinnier top. And if you look closely, it's, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the camera, but there is actually a tiny little faint line there, and that is a very important line. That line measures one, and exactly one value very precisely, in this case, is 100 mils. So you think, what would be the use of a, of a piece of glassware that can only measure one volume? Well, I mean, if you take advanced chemistry, maybe AP chemistry, maybe even in Chem 1, you might start to talk about what these are used for. If not, you can just ask your, ask your instructor and see what they say. Lastly, I think the most precise instrument we've talked about yet uh, is the graduated cylinder. Now, why do they call it grad cylinder makes sense, it's cylinder shape, but why is it called graduated? Well, the graduated cylinder has tiny little lines, lots of lines marked on, all marking a specific volume. In this case, this is a 10 mil graduated cylinder, sort of the 10 mils. Every big line is one mil, and the little lines in between are uh, the 0.1 mil. This one is a 50 Nope, sorry, this is a 100 mil graduated cylinder. Um, it does the same thing. They both measure the same thing. So you think, when do you use what? Well, obviously, it's the, the, the volume you're using. You want to use a, a, a piece of equipment that is close to the max of what you're measuring. So if you were measuring 9 mils, I mean, yeah, you could use this. You could use this. You could go up to that mark right there and be like, ah, oh, that's 9 mils. But, but why when you have this available? If you have this available, that 9 right there is going to be far more precise than a 9 other words. Now, some of you keen-eyed observers might have noticed that, well, the flask and the beaker, it also has lines on it. So why can't we just use these to measure? Please don't. Please do not. These are not that precise. If you measure, if you put water up to that line, say oh, that's 50 mils, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty close, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as precise as this 50 right here. So the reason they put the marks on is so you can have an estimate. And if you know you're mixing 50 mils and 50 mils into this flask, you can say, oh, okay, yeah, that's right, it's 100 mils. But if you mix 50 mils and 50 mils and it's still down here, you're like, I messed up somewhere. So do not use these as like, oh, these are super, super, super precise because they are not. Uh, you want to use a graduated cylinder for something like that. Here's a couple other miscellaneous pieces of equipment you might 
come across. This is called a watch glass. Um, I always think it looks like a, gi a giant's eye contact. It's just a little um, con cave or convex, however you're holding it, uh, glass uh, circle that you can put small amounts of materials in here, either solid or liquid, and helps hold things for reactions. Nice chemically resistant and shatter resistant, not proof. Nice thing. Like I said before, this is called the glass stir rod. Uh, just be very careful with them when you set them on the table. One of my um, uh, favorite sayings in chemistry when it comes to, to lab work is around things roll. I don't know how many of these my students have placed on the table and then it just rolls off and that when that thing hits the ground it shatters into a million pieces. And then lastly I have here something you probably know what it is, is a funnel. This is a plastic funnel but you have glass funnels. Be careful with uh, the glass funnels, especially the ones with the long necks because they're just very fragile. They're very easy. If you put it down into a, a flask and you start bending left and right you can put the wrong kind of uh, torque on that, put the wrong stress on there, and you can actually snap off the neck. So be careful with that. And once again, I need to reiterate that round things do roll. So if you place this on a uh, flat surface, it could roll, especially when it's the glass one, it could roll right off the table and uh, end up breaking the funnel. I do want to take a moment to talk about this big boy here. This is a four liter Erlenmeyer flask, but you'll notice this weird little thing on the end. Well, what this is, is you can attach a, a, a air hose to this and then as the, or, or a water hose or use something to draw a vacuum on it. And so as the, as the fluid rushes by, because of Bernoulli's principle, it lowers the pressure, the, the moving fluid has a lower pressure. And so what ends up happening is you can actually draw air out of this, which then will draw air through the top. And you can use this to like really quickly like vacuum filter things. So if you're ever wondering like, what is this for? It is actually Actually, um, uh, like I said, use to attach a hose to to create a vacuum. You guys know what this is. This is a thermometer. Uh, thermometers uh, use just like the ones at uh, that you would anywhere else. Th these ends are usually filled with. They used to be filled with mercury, and you might have heard about that. But you'd be hard pressed to find a mercury thermometer in any lab you guys are in. You'll know it's mercury if the inside is a silver. This is a red liquid. That red liquid is uh, usually an alcohol that has a, a relatively low boiling point. But anyway, it helps you uh, uh, see or to measure the, the temperature in a certain way. Now, uh, be careful. Once again, I can't emphasize enough, round things roll. So if you place this on the counter, it can easily roll off. But the people who make this are already out thinking you. They see right here, you can see a like little plastic uh, rubber triangle. Now they actually place that on there so that when it's on a surface, like this surface, I don't know if you can see that or not, but when it's on the surface, it um, won't roll off because the triangle uh, keeps from doing that.